All right, guys, how's it going? It's August 2nd today, I think, or something. I don't know. It's the first day or two in August. Anyway, this here is our primary dugout. This is where we draw the water from for the farm, as well as we do have deep wells, but uh, we have to mix them because the deep wells are a little too uh, high in salts. It's super soft water, our, our wells are, but uh, they're high in sulfate. So what we do for spraying is we water test all the time, obviously. It's very important to test your water. And we'll mix it to a certain ratio with dugout water, which is also tested, by the way. So that way we can have the proper spraying water. And Mike, why is it so important to have proper spraying water? Because some of the chemicals uh, react very negatively to uh, different water. Some won't work, especially if you have hard water. The harder the water, the worse your uh, application will be. And uh, so anyway, there's a whole science to that. We're not going to get into that right now. But anyways, we're moving some water around. This is our primary dugout. And uh, over here, right over there, I'll show you. That is nearly an empty dugout. So what we have done here is uh, we've always have a, we have always had our primary dugout, which is a pretty big dugout, by the way. And uh, then we dug a secondary dugout for emergency purposes. And yes, these dugouts are on a water run, so that way they get filled up. But they didn't get filled up. Why? Because we're in a drought. So we're actually moving the secondary dugout over to the primary. And then what we're gonna do once we have the secondary dugout empty, we're gonna let it dry out a little bit because after all it is like 35 degrees Celsius out so it won't take very long with the wind blowing here in South Saskatchewan. And we're gonna dig it deeper. Right now we're rocking a six inch uh, irrigation pump. We got a few of these uh, pipes strung together. We got a few leaks and that's pretty normal. I just really like water. When you've been, when you live in such a dry area, you get really excited when you see water. So let's go take a look here. So we cut this little trench down here for, so the water can flow. Uh, they've been pumping. How long, Mike, have you been pumping? That's a really good question, by the way. And uh, they've been pumping now for a few days. This water was, uh, this dugout here was near empty. So we're gonna keep filling this one up. And then we're gonna dig a mother dugout over there. And I mean like, we're not messing around. We got lots of scraper power. This dugout was dug like years and years and years ago. Years and years ago, I was a little kid. In fact, I think it was here before I was a kid. Before I was even born. So, uh, they used to be dugout banks. We've taken them away, hauled them away, so on and so forth. So, let's go see what we can find. Are we in the mountains? Sounds like running water from the mountains. Only difference is I think the mountain water might be a little bit cleaner. <laughs> and I guarantee you the mountain water is a whole heck of a lot colder. So there's the other dugout, nearly empty. We've cut a trench in the middle of it there so we can uh, drain the water. Then we dug a hole right over there, so that way we can suck it right dry, and then we're gonna let it dry out. So this was built by our double scraper setup. We spent like half a year working on it, off and on, obviously, because we're farming, and farming always takes priority. You can see where our uh, our hose is there with a the tire. We were sucking out of this for water, for spraying. It was uh, about, well, you can see the line there. That's where that pallet is. That's about how full it was. Then they uh, cut a, a road in here so we can get gravel trucks down. We've been hauling with end dumps as well because what we're doing is we're just gonna make this into this. There's a big dugout, we're gonna make this here. We're gonna expand this dugout by like four times. We're just gonna keep cutting ways down with the scraper and we're digging with trackos and uh, we're hauling the dirt away as fast as we can. Why? Because we gotta build about 30 feet 30 feet of fill over there for those big bins. So that way we can continue the road with those hoppers. We need about 30 feet in there. And how wide? Very good question. Uh, like 600 feet wide or something. 30 feet by 600 feet. And uh, 
as as we keep coming out this way, it's just gonna get to be more. It could be like 80 feet over there before you know it. And that's a whole heck of a lot of dirt. You gotta move a mountain over there. So uh, we're gonna move a mountain. And by moving a mountain, we're gonna dig a lake. That is our plan. So we get, we're rocking an irrigation pump over there. So yeah, there's the hole. That's dug by a trackle. I think it's about 15 feet deep. We're just trying to get the dugout dry. So what we intend on doing is uh, we're gonna come in here. We have to peel all this mud off because you know once it dries, it's still gonna be mud underneath, right? It's quite saturated. And uh, we're gonna take it as deep as we can for the amount of time that we'll have to work on it, because. You know, if we get some snow this winter, hopefully we do because we're quite dry. Uh, these are in a run, so they will fill. That is our, that's what we want. We want them to fill, but uh, we don't really want it to fill until we can get it a whole heck of a lot deeper. Oh yeah, that's the 516 on that pump, by the way. What kind of pump is that? I have no freaking clue. I am not a water pumping moving kind of guy that's actually been the the guy's been working on all this they've been moving dirt while we've been commuting between farms and setting up other stuff uh, they're dirt moving so right there see that tire we were pumping out of this this spring Well, Mike, I have some questions, buddy. If you have uh, two deep wells, why don't you just use that water and not have to worry about it? Uh, it's just because that water, it's got too much salt in it. Uh, like when you wash your vehicle or if you spray water on the ground, you'll have a bit of a white film. So we can't just solely use that for spraying water. We need to mix it off to a different ratio depending on every year is different. The ratio is always different every year. Sometimes it's 50-50, sometimes it's one third, two thirds uh, or whatnot. But good question though. Mike, how deep do your wells go down? Uh, our wells are around 750 feet or something like that, give or take a few feet. Uh, it goes right down to the Judith Basin, I do believe. Mike, is there any natural springs? Like, can you dig a dugout and then find like a natural spring so that way it kind of keeps filling? Uh, there is, but uh, there is a few natural springs, typically in coolies. Uh, you can dig down maybe 20 feet and find a spring. Maybe that's where the water table is down in that area, but we aren't near a coulee and uh, there is no natural springs around here. So uh, basically you just dig a big hole in the ground to try and in a run, in a water run, so that way you can try to catch as much water as possible. Well, Mike, how much water do you guys really use? Like you, I know you guys don't uh, spray with a lot of water volume. Uh, so how much water do you guys typically use? Well, that is a loaded question, you guys, because first of all, um, what completely depends on your season like a hot dry year like we had this year you're not doing very much uh spraying are you like you're not doing any disease any fungicide applications um so wet years is typically when you spray more and it also depends on what kind of crops you have in do you have lentils in do you have canola in do you have cereals in do you have chickpeas in all take a uh, different amount of fungicides um, for example, chickpeas, we have to spray five times typically. We have been up to eight applications of fungicide just to try to keep the disease off, off them or we'll just or we'll just lose them. That's, and then so every time we go out, we're in that 10-gallon uh, range or sometimes we're in 30-gallon an acre range. It just kind of depends. So I would say we're probably around that 1.5 to 2 million gallons of water that we're typically using in the course of a season, give or take. Completely depends on your crop rotation and it completely depends on whether it's wet or dry. Mike, do you have any uh, like rivers? Do you have any rivers you can suck out of? Do you have any lakes that you can suck out of? Uh, no, we don't. We don't really have any of either. Uh, we are in the prairies, you guys. So the prairies is just bare land, no trees. And uh, yeah, no, you don't got nothing. You can try and plant some trees, in which we do. All the trees that are down here were planted at one time. And uh, try and catch some snow. But we get a lot of wind, right? Welcome to the prairies. We get a lot of wind, winter or summer, and during the winter, it blows all the snow away. Blows it to a coulee, where maybe a coulee is 30 miles away, but it will blow it to a coulee. So uh, that's why it's always good to have your dugouts or something in a water run, because that's where the snow is gonna get blown to. So uh, once it, once that run gets going, it's gotta fill up everyone's dugouts, and hopefully you're not the last one on the end. 
Oh man, but uh, but no. Well, Mike, what happens if you were to run out? Well, obviously, this dugout's empty now. So, what happens if your primary dugout runs out? If our primary dugout runs out, that's not an option, especially for livestock producers. And we're not even a livestock producer anymore, though we did have cattle. But uh, my brother's houses are still on it, so we would be hauling water. Mike, where are you going to haul water from? Well, we're going to be hauling water from other dugouts that aren't being used anymore, and uh, probably get mixed off with well water. So. Uh, when it's dry, it's typically dry, and we're dry, so. But, you know what they say, nothing lasts forever, so uh, we'll get through this drought, and that'll be about it, hopefully. Oh, the pumps, they must have ran out of water. That's a good sign. And before you know it, I'll be talking, and we'll be all running over, and our basements will be full of water, and uh, yeah, I look forward to those days. So I'll catch you guys on the flipper. All right, now we got everything shut off here. Yeah, I'm back. <laughs> um, just wanted to show you the pump because I actually, this is really the first time I've ever seen this pump up close and personal like this. So, uh, I don't know what that name is. I'm going to say it looks like Duda. Oh, yeah, it's down here. Duda, Duda, Dota, Duda. Was that like doo doo? Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. I didn't go there. But, anyways, so we actually drained this down. Uh, we have this suction sitting on a pallet down there also hooked to a tire for flotation that way it doesn't go jamming itself into the mud and uh looks like it could be used to pick it pumped out again mike how long did it take ah i've had to go to the shop it's probably been about an hour and a half i would say since we were last down here you gotta remember the water is like literally saturated the ground's saturated right so it's just literally oozing out of the ground and filling this hole and we're just gonna keep pumping it out so anyway there you go now you got to see the little pump. I know nothing about these types of things. <laughs> Doo-doo. I just want to call it doo-doo. Anyway, uh, it actually takes a little bit of power to run. And uh, yesterday, uh, um, it was about 37 degrees Celsius. So pretty warm day. That's pretty hot. Pretty dang hot for us. It was actually heating. So we took the shield off to try to get a little more airflow in there. And uh, that's the reason why the shield's off. Okay. So uh, like I said... This dugout is gonna go a lot deeper, like a lot deeper. And it's gonna go all the way back here. So they've been digging this out here with uh, Traco and uh, they're looking forward to getting into this dugout here with the scrapers. Obviously it's gonna have to do a little drying or something because scrapers and mud, they don't get, they, don't, they do not go hand in hand. So, all right guys, now you've seen it. These are like the side projects that we're working on all the time. We're always, I know I shaved, right? Can't believe it either. Yeah, right? Crazy. Um, we're always working, like, on a farm, you're always you're always doing far, farm work. You're spraying, you're, basically, you seed, and then you spray all summer long, and then you harvest for, like, it seems like three months, even though it's probably only two, and then for the whole winter, starting, like, November, uh, hopefully, hopefully you're done harvest by that time. Sometimes we haven't been, but hopefully after that, then you literally haul grain, so you haul all the grain that you grew, to the terminals, which is a hundred miles away with lots of trucks. <clears throat> and you do that until about March, because that's when spring road bands come on. So you have to shut the trucking down. Uh, even if you're not done, you shut the trucking down and then you basically, you prep. So somewhere in there, as you know, that we got a clean seed. And so there's always stuff going on, but this year we don't have as much grain to haul because there's no crop to combine, even though we're still gonna have to combine it. You guys can see all that. We have started, we have taken some tests. Whew. It's not very good but anyways we'll get to that point we got a lot of harvest videos to do so we're not gonna i'm not gonna bring you up right now but uh if you have any spare time is where i'm trying to go with this you're always doing different stuff like this you're trying to improve you're building bin pads mike did you say like 80 feet that's because where the bins are going there's actually a big dugout because we dug a dugout there we never didn't really think about taking the bins that far but we're gonna have to go right over that dugout and the dugout is like, you know, it's, the, it's a big dugout. So we're going to have to fill the dugout in, pump the dugout out, fill the dugout in. And we're 30 feet or maybe 40 feet before we even get to the dugout. And then the dugout goes down, right? So that's kind of where that came from. Maybe it's not 80, maybe it's only 60. But anyways, it doesn't matter. It's a lot of a lot of dirt that's got to go in there. So, And you really want to make sure you can pack that for a long period of time. Because if you don't, if you can't just throw a bunch of dirt on and stick a bin on it, right? Because it's going to settle. It takes years to settle that much dirt out. All right, guys, that's enough. You guys have a good one. You're freaking awesome. Love you. Adios, amigos.